Welcome to the Fat Emperor podcast. I'm your host, Ivor Cummins. We're supported by the Irish Heart Disease Awareness Charity, which advocates a simple CT scan to reveal your CAC score. So know your score and take action to prevent that premature heart attack. Everything you need to know will be right here. I told them just go and Google insulin resistance and, and any disease that you're seeing in your population in the last 30 years. And they did. And within minutes, their, their jaws dropped. They had no idea that the literature is absolutely crammed with hundreds of thousands of papers linking insulin sensitivity to all the diseases they're trying to deal with. It's mad. It, it is mad. And, um, the, the study that you, you mentioned by uh, Gerald Reven in, and colleagues, um, what, one of whom I got I got to throw this in was uh, one of these colleagues that worked on that was Dr. Francesco Facchini, who uh, wrote a wrote a blurb for my book Dumping Iron. He, he's done a lot of iron research, but in any case, this the study by Reven and colleagues. Yes, it's incredible when you when you see that graph of the people grouped by insulin sensitivity, turtle, turtiles of insulin sensitivity and the diseases, it, it's just, it's one of the most striking things that you can ever see related to health. Insulin sensitivity is just critical for health. Um, so, it, but it, it's just, I, I would have to assume that your experience with the doctors not, not knowing this is typical. Uh, it, it's, it's sad. It's very sad because, I mean, in, in say engineering or high tech industry, that could never happen because businesses can only survive by knowing the real causes and addressing them. Uh, otherwise, their competitor would kill them. But but in medicine, though, there isn't that same selection pressure and you can easily go ahead without knowing root causes and it technically won't, won't affect your business. So I think... It's not a conspiracy. It's, it's just no one's interested if there's no drug for it, I guess. But yeah, the, the, the other paper from Reven just it actually springs to mind as we speak. Uh, Reven had one, and I nearly can remember the title. It's years ago. He said, all obese people are not created equal. Dash. Insulin resistance is the determinant of cardiovascular risk in the obese. And I mean, he just split them out again, large numbers by insulin sensitivity and all the cardiometabolic risk factors dramatically went from high down to low as they got more insulin sensitive and they were all the same big BMI. And you're right. No, no one, no one knows this, even many doctors. Right. I, 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 I like your analogy there uh, with business because the, the, that this couldn't happen in business because, like you say, the competitors would get you. But yeah, they're the same selection pressures are not in medicine apparently uh, because it it just keeps going on. I think that yes, this this problem of them. Of, of them generally not knowing and and wanting to prescribe drugs there's another chicken or egg problem there too as, as i'm sure you know pharmaceutical companies are very involved in um in in influencing medical research and influ influencing medical practice and influencing the standard of care um but there's you know there's also the case where Patients are often, you know, reluctant to do anything much about changing. Also, the fact that most doctors really wouldn't know what to tell them to change, um, you know, rather than prescribing a drug. So there's lots of levels here where people are people are not getting the help they need, in in my view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's true. And uh, hopefully things are changing, though. I, I I was chatting earlier. I did a podcast with Dr. Andy Fung, and he's new to this, but he was eight years a doctor. Uh, he's in New York, and he went through college, read residency, and seven or eight years of practice. And then he became pre-diabetic himself. He's Asian extraction, obviously. And he spent a whole year exercising an hour a day on an elliptical machine, didn't lose any weight, did improve his blood glucose a little. 
And then he discovered, uh, I think it was Dr. Jason Fung, and it blew him away. But long story short, he's now for the last year massively helping his patients rather than just giving them pills. And he admitted and acknowledged in fairness, and so would I, which you said, he still has a lot of patients who won't do it even when he explains it. But a large proportion are doing it and he's got guys lost nearly 100 pounds, insulin down from 25 down to like five, um, like massive VLDL and triglyceride levels collapsed. And he's a huge proportion of his patients who are just absolutely ecstatic because someone actually has told them what they need to do. And uh, they won't all do it, but a huge amount will. Yes, it, yes, I, I'm sure that many people, if if they hear from their doctor, you know, doctor's orders and all that, they'll they'll do it. So, but obviously, right now, not very many people are getting those doctor's orders. Yeah, well, I think to be quite honest, it, the power of the internet six or seven years ago, with PubMed, ResearchGate, and all the data and published papers, allowed me to find out. The same thing allowed you and there's a growing army of citizen scientists and the beauty is doctors are too busy the guys i mentioned are great guys they said like there's no way they're going to go home at night and start looking up stuff they've got their cmes they've got their their education continued medical education and that's mostly kind of pharmaceutical based and uh, there's no way they have time but by feeding back to the doctors and all these podcasts and all of this worldwide, the conferences on low carb, this massive groundswell, I think it's going to get back in the next few years to more and more doctors, particularly young ones. And I'm expecting a kind of a revolution. Am I too positive about it? <laughs> um, no, I, I don't think so. I see a lot of the same things that you are. And I've seen on Twitter, I've seen doctors actually changing their minds. Um, you might know, I, I'm sure, you know, uh, Dr. Tro, uh, uh, Collagian, I think is his last name. Um, yeah. and he was obese himself and he's since now he's very much not obese. Uh, and he changed his mind. He, he got on Twitter and he was talking to people and he decided that, he was going to give this low carb a try and now he's uh, he's in event he lost a lot of weight like 150 pounds or something along those lines and and he's become an evangelist for it uh, i think that's great i just saw another one just the other day um a doctor who i couldn't tell you her name at the moment and i had not heard of her before but she's she was basically figuratively slapping herself in the forehead saying, I, you know, I can't believe we're, you know, medicine as a profession is overlooking all this. Um, it's got to change. Yeah, man, you're absolutely right, Dennis. Uh, Tro is fantastic. I had a massive Twitter fight with Tro a few years ago about LDL. And he was just coming into the low carb thing, I think, but he was still a big LDL believer. And uh, we're no, we're great friends now. But Tro is Tro is not just converted; he's not just been able to change his mind about everything and lose a, an enormous amount of weight. He's become a trailblazer, and actually, it's himself and Brian Lenskys. I think I met in San Diego. Another doc; those two guys now are doing the Low Carb MD podcast. <laughs> I mean, it's it's exactly. But you know something, I know we're I know we're both got time or hard stops here. It's late in the evening here in Ireland and you've got a busy day. But uh that's a quite a positive note to to kind of begin to wrap up on. What do you think? Yes, uh we can only hope. Um I I'm out trying to spread the word myself. We didn't talk too much until the end here about low carb, but I'm I'm very much in favor of it and especially um get you know getting rid of all the ultra processed foods eat, eating eating whole minimally processed food unfortunately the vast majority of the food that people eat is ultra processed food i think that's pretty much the root cause of our problems our modern health problems right there um yes yeah, so hopefully people are becoming more aware of that and uh yes and, and the doctors will become more aware of that too 
Yeah, and uh, I just thought of another positive note to end on. The calcification scan, and I work on behalf of Irish Heart Disease Awareness, a charity, to get out information about a life-saving scan, CAC score, basically tells you if you've got big disease and huge risk and allows you to take action, even if your bloods don't really say much. But in the 2018 guidelines, uh, delighted last year, they've now come out with CAC level 2A evidence to use it for middle risk people to a paradigm shift to actually use a scan that sees the heart disease directly rather than blood tests in medication decisions. So there may very well be people now finding out their true level of heart disease, maybe not needing medications rather than needlessly getting medications for life, and then finding people who are huge risk who can get medications and every other intervention. So that's another shot in the arm for me this year. That's fantastic, Ivor. Ah, yeah, good to go. So we've got to keep getting the message out. Listen, Dennis, it was a pleasure to talk to you. And you know what? We're going to be back talking again. And we've got to pick a few more topics to kill. That's great, Ivor. It's totally a pleasure talking to you. I'm a big admirer of yours. I think the work you're doing is fantastic. And I hope you keep on well keep keep on going with it um it was really great talking to you and yourself too dennis hugely enjoyed your book and i need to get to your others and you're a big force on twitter too and i think i agree twitter is where a lot of this is going to really get out yes absolutely yes thanks a lot dennis okay, Good luck okay thanks I, next time thanks ivor talk to you later Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see my subscribe button in the middle of the screen, a free viewing of the Widowmaker movie on the far right, and myself and Dr. Gerber's book, Eat Rich, Live Long, on the left. Otherwise, please do subscribe to the audio podcast. Thanks.